people ask me why we let Dan do the things that we let him do, well, there wasn't a question of that in Kenya. Everything became an adventure. That experience of a global tribe was something that was to shape his character forever. Dan grew up in a family of photographers. Um, his dad loved photography and used to work with Dan at an early age making albums. So he was influenced by uh, many, many people of all races, cultures. And I think it just became a, a natural thing for him to want to experiment himself. used humor tremendously. <laughs> he did a lot of wearing masks or doing rather silly things, but it, it completely uh, disarmed whomever he was that he was dealing with. <laughs> I always bring a gorilla mask whenever I'm traveling around. So whenever I stop in a village, I just put this mask on and start dancing around. And the, the people just immediately go, they go crazy and they, they really like you, you know, treat like a hero almost. There's a new sheriff in town. I'm going to clean up this place. And now I'd like to do belly dance for you. I never was worried about him. I, he would push it a little too much, but he would always, always be able to make somebody laugh. He was extraordinary like that. Being in Somalia was both the most exciting and the most horrific time of Dan's life. Somalia was a battlefield in the early 90s. Initially, there was a terrible famine that left thousands of people dead. And that's when Dan first went in to Somalia. It was an incredibly dangerous situation at the time. It, it still is a um, life and death situation. You had to be very careful. It was, you know, a, a lawless society, so everything completely chaotic and, um, and incredibly dangerous. His photographs at the age of 21, I think, were among the first to awaken the world to what was really happening there. Dan was completely horrified and captivated by the situation in Somalia, went back over and over again to shoot the worsening situation. It went from being a terrible famine to being a world-class tragedy. And then the Americans came in with soldiers, and, and then it became a war between the Americans and the United Nations tr troops and the Somalis. For a young man who had never seen war, it certainly was horrific for him. He just, he started to lose it, quite frankly. He started to chew cat, which was the stimulant that people used to get high. And it, it, it took a great effort for him to collect himself and come back into focus and really go back into Somalia and take the pictures that ultimately um, were center spread of Newsweek and Time magazine. He was actually one of Reuters youngest photographers ever. He was 21 when he started working with them and 22 when he became a regular stringer. We would see these pictures coming from Newsweek and Time that he was taking um, of the famine or of, of the tanks or uh, of the Black Hawks and uh, he'd be very close up and there'd be flames and people would say, Amy, you know, aren't you worried about your brother? And I never really was, you know, I knew he'd be okay. 
there was a bombing by UN troops of a house where they thought the warlord was hiding. It's rather like our quest for Osama bin Laden. And they killed, UN and US, under US guidance, killed 84 people. They wounded many hundreds. So the survivors ran to the journalist's hotel to ask them to come and, and, and cover the carnage, shoot the carnage. And Dan was among the group who went. And when they arrived at the site, a thousand people had gathered. And the people thought that they were troops come back to, to, to shoot the dead. And they started throwing stones and sticks at the um, journalists. Dan and his other, other friends ran. But in the end, four of them were stoned to death. And one survived from that group. So Dan was stoned to death. Shortly after Dan was killed, I went back to London to my apartment and I was rummaging around in a cupboard and I found three journals that had been tucked away that he had just kept there for safekeeping. As it turned out, we found 17 journals that he had collected and created over a period of eight years. They just kept turning up all over the world. This is an older book. This is when he was probably uh, 19, this I would say. This is in Morocco. So he was experimenting with painting pictures, tinting photographs. Mm -hmm. Dan put into his journal anything that he saw around him, anything that was found or created, feathers and sticks and photographs and anything that he found, the artifacts of life. So just by looking at a page, you could tell where he'd been that day, probably. Throughout the years, he would go back to old books and keep layering them with new things that they found. He'd put a marker on it and then, you know, he just wanted it to be more interesting and layered and nothing to be precious, you know. Every now and again there was a, a comment like to you who are reading this in 50 years time. Mm. So there was a, a sense that maybe somebody would mm -hmm. look at it, but maybe it would be a grandchild or mm -hmm. something. Exactly. Not thousands of people around the world. I tried for years to find a publisher and then we put together the first book and now there's been a second book which is a bi biography called Art of Life. First book is Journey as a Destination and now I, I know there's another book waiting to be made. And we've created a foundation that commemorates and celebrates what we call creative activists. Really using media in a powerful positive way to wake people up because we don't have a long time on this planet I think to sort things out and I think if Dan can be a clarion call to awaken, then I will be really, really happy. I get letters every week from people who have been moved and inspired by him, and it's so nice to know, because I do miss him so much, um, that he is continuing to light sparks in people. He just experimented. Mm -hmm. You notice every page is different. He just kept experimenting mm -hmm. and learning. I think Dan's primary message is to live fully, to enjoy life as much as you possibly can, to love, to laugh, to dance, to be as much of yourself as you can possibly be, not only for yourself, but also for others. Okay.